So team, keep it clean. We got a lot to talk about in this video. So sit down and let's get straight into it. But before we do, I got to hope that y'all are doing a lot better than I am. Because what happened just a few minutes ago, I had actually recorded everything that we're getting ready to talk about in this video. I uh, sat here, talked, every, went over every single subject. But then when I went to edit the video, there was no sound. And I said, what, what, what happened? But I realized my son, he was in here yesterday. And he was playing around with the camera, with the microphone and everything. He was making a little music video and whatnot, doing a little vlogging. And he turned the microphone off. And I was like, oh, but it's okay. I don't mind. We just run it right back. And what are we running back? More information on Devontae Adams. And I know team keepers, I know y'all are like, oh, what's going to happen with Devontae Adams? When is it going to come to a uh, close? When are we going to find out exactly where Devontae Adams is going? We don't know. We don't know. Could be any day now, could be this week, it could be next week. We just want it to happen so we can have some clarity moving forward. But another update came out that involves our Baltimore Ravens when it comes to Devontae Adams. This from Sports Illustrator says, We have learned that the New York Jets, the New Orleans Saints, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and the Baltimore Ravens are the front runners to land Las Vegas star wide receiver Devontae Adams. So I like that. I like that. We still in the mix. I like that. We still one of the four teams. Four, the four front runners, Jets, Saints, Ravens, Steelers. So I, I, I'm loving that because I would love for the – y'all already know what time it is. I know a lot of y'all would love for Devontae Adams to be on these Baltimore Ravens, but it gets a little tricky because it says, but a new team with a great need at wide receiver could be joining the mix. Who is that team? Well, let's continue reading to find out. Is it the Buffalo Bills? come off an embarrassing week five loss to the Houston Texans and were without their main receiver, Khalil Shakir. Uh, the team saw just how bad things could get without Shakir leading the passing attack as Bills quarterback Josh Allen was only able to complete four passes to his wide receiver core. See, you hear that, right? You hear Josh Allen without his main receiver, Khalil Shakir, and things got rough. But Josh Allen has also been without a Stephon Diggs. And against him... Sorry, teams. Josh Allen was doing his thing. But then he was, went up against a real team in the Baltimore Ravens, and he ain't really do much of anything. Now, Josh Allen is still nice. Josh Allen still one of them guys. Josh Allen still like that. I like Josh Allen. He could play, and he one of the best quarterbacks in the league for sure. But I still put Lamar Jackson over him for the reason that this, 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 this article talked about. It said the Bills, they could possibly enter the mix for Devontae Adams, but let, let, let's hear what Adam Schefter had to say first. It says ESPN's NFL insider Adam Schefter reported that the Bills are monitoring the Adams situation and could get into the mix according to sources. So the Bills are like, man, Josh Allen, he needs a star wide receiver. He needs somebody who's like that. But you see, Lamar Jackson... I've been clamoring, a lot of us have been clamoring for the Ravens to really get him a star wide receiver because we've seen what Lamar Jackson has already done without a star wide receiver. We've seen everything that he's accomplished without a star wide receiver. I know a lot of Ravens fans be like, oh, we don't need a Devontae Adams. We don't need Devontae Adams. We good with what we got. And uh, we could be, but why not try to get even better? Think about this. Leading Russia for the past, what, four, five million seasons? It's been Lamar Jackson. Every year it's Lamar Jackson. Leading Russia, Lamar Jackson. Derrick Henry's here, and he's been taken over. It's night, nice, and he's a star running back. A lot of Ravens fans were like, oh, we don't need Derrick Henry. We should have kept Gus Edwards. That's what they were saying the first couple of weeks. Oh, I remember. I ain't forget. But you see what a star does for another superstar? He helps them. He adds his presence, and that's exactly what Derrick Henry has done for Lamar Jackson. You see the value in Derrick Henry. What he does for this entire offense just makes life so much easier for not only Lamar Jackson, but for everybody. Why not add a star wide receiver to the mix? It makes too much sense, man. Way too much sense. So, I mean, and again, Lamar Jackson has been doing this they're doing his thing without a star wide receiver his entire career. We've been waiting for the Ravens to give him a star wide receiver. It's, they should have done this years ago, but they've chose not to for whatever reason. But it's like, again, Lamar, without a star wide receiver, two MVP, not one, but two MVPs. Won, what, 69 games, won the second most games behind since 2018 behind uh, Patrick Mahomes, and that's it? That's it. Like, nobody's won more games besides Patrick Mahomes than Lamar Jackson. Patrick Mahomes, he had a Tyreek. He had a star wide receiver. And he had the, the best receiver in the game, in my opinion. And he did a lot with him. 
So just imagine what Lamar Jackson, with everything that he's done already, what he could do with somebody like a Devontae Adams. But there's a lot of stuff that we've been hearing about the Ravens being interested in Devontae Adams. But there's one person who's saying that he's hearing the exact opposite. And that's Peter Schrager, uh, Schrags from NFL Network. And this is what he had to say. He said, I've heard that the Ravens are absolutely not interested in Devontae Adams. Adams and I said what <laughs> is that blasphemy well at least I wanted to be but when I heard that I wasn't even tripping I wasn't and it's not just because I really want them to get Devontae Adams it's because we see stuff like this all the time it's business you don't want to leak your plans you don't want to leak what you got on your mind you don't want to leak let other teams know what you're trying to do when it comes to your football team and your franchise because you don't want them to one-up you you want to handle your business. You want to do it discreetly. You want to do it quietly. You want to make it happen without them getting involved. Now, something that goes in the Baltimore Ravens' favor uh, when it comes to this whole Devontae Adams thing. Again, the, the front runners, the Jets, uh, the Saints, the Steelers, and the Ravens. All right, cool. You think about the Jets and that brutal loss that they took against the Vikings. 930 in the morning, by the way. They took an early morning loss. But anyway, um, you think about the Saints. Derek Carr, and we're not celebrating an injury at all, so don't get it twisted. Um, with Derek Carr, he's going to be out with an oblique injury. He's week to week with an oblique injury. So that could be one week, could be two weeks. Who knows if it could end up being longer. But would Devontae Adams really want to go to that, that situation? Well, you ain't even got your quarterback in the mix right now. You don't even know when he's coming back. Now, he could wait it out a couple more weeks, get a little closer to the trade deadline, and be like, all right, when Derek Carr is healthy, then I'll go over there. Or if he's really looking to get this thing going now, because apparently that's what the, the report was. Raiders want to do this thing ASAP. So if that is the case, then he can be like, you know what? I ain't trying to wait for Derek Carr. Look, we played together over in Las Vegas, but it was cool. But I, I, I'm looking for other options. So that could possibly, not saying it does, but that could possibly help take the Saints out of the mix. And with the Jets, like they just fired their head coach this morning, Robert Sala. So with them firing the head coach, that could actually work two ways. One, it could be he could look at it like, man, the Jets, they still got all this dysfunction going on. Uh, no, thanks. Or he could look at it like, oh, they got rid of Robert Sala. OK, now I really want to go over there because we know that's Aaron Rodgers team. That wasn't never Robert Sala's team. It wasn't Woody Johnson. That's Aaron Rodgers team because he is the QB slash GM. He gets what he wants. So that can make uh, going to the New York Jets even more enticing for Devontae Adams. But, hey, we uh, we don't know. We don't know. It was funny. I did see a Ravens fan in a, uh, say that uh, the Baltimore Ravens, he said, oh, that's why they were passing so much when he saw that the Ravens uh, were the favorites to land uh, Devontae Adams. I said, hey, maybe. Maybe they were just trying to put on a show for Devontae Adams. Or maybe they just were like, look, these Bengals, they can't stop. I'll pass it. I mean, we can't stop theirs, but they can't stop us, so might as well. But as far as Devontae Adams goes, Ravens are – uh, one of the favorites to land them. They wanted the front runners to land Devontae Adams. So that's good news in my book. But let's see what happens off of it. So the Baltimore Ravens, they brought back a familiar face in Pepe Williams. They signed him to the practice squad. But that got a lot of Ravens fans wondering, uh-oh, is that because Marlon Humphreys, he's significantly hurt and they wanted some cornerback help? Well, that could be the case. We hope that it's not. But... I think that he's going to be out probably the next couple of weeks, but we won't know really till tomorrow when they practice and we get the injury report. Hey, hopefully he's not even on there. And that walking boot that he was in after the game, it was just extra, extra, extra precautionary. But we'll see. But a lot of fans were speculating that maybe Pepe Williams is to help give the Baltimore Ravens some much needed help in the secondary and some much needed depth in the secondary. But... Today, um, this he could be possibly a two birds and one stone type of thing. What I mean when I say that is he could be here to help give them depth with Marlon Humphrey, but also um, Kadir Holman, he got signed off the Baltimore Ravens practice squad to the Houston Texans. So they lost a cornerback on the practice squad, and all they did was replace a cornerback on the practice squad. Does this have any bearing or let us know what the deal is with Marlon Humphrey? 
Not necessarily, but it could be one of those things. That you're bringing back a player who's very familiar with you. Uh, he knows the ins and outs. He's been in the building for years. Uh, so this is one of those things, in my opinion, where it's stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. So now we're getting to my favorite part of these videos where we get to feature your questions. But before we do that, we need to tell you about Autograph. Now, Autograph is a free, completely free app uh, for you to download that is the best kind of app for us as football fans, especially Ravens fans. Like on there, we do our exclusive. It can only be found on Autograph, nowhere else. We do our exclusive previews of every single Baltimore Ravens game or only on Autograph. So if you want to check those out, download Autograph again and use code TKIC. It's completely free. I have the link in the description. I have the link as a pinned comment just to make it super easy for you when you download it. It's super, super easy. But it is just so fan friendly. You can go on there. It's like for whatever Ravens, you want to watch Ravens videos. You want to go to Ravens website. You want to see what people are talking about on Ravens Twitter. It's all on there. It's literally a one stop shop for football fans. But in this case, especially for us as Ravens fans. So download autograph. Again, use code TKIC or just use the link that I have in the description. And as a pinned comment to download autograph and trust, trust, you're not going to regret it at all. You're going to love the app. I know you're going to come back on here and tell me, oh, my goodness, I downloaded an autograph and I had so much fun on there. Enjoy it and come back and thank me later. So now we made it to where we feature your questions in these videos. And let's hear exactly what y'all had to say. First question came from my guy, Javo. He said, how would you feel if we brought in Robert Sala to help with our defense? Not saying to demote or fire Zach or but kind of get him an assistant. Sala is a great defensive coordinator, but bad as a head coach and that's what we've been hearing but at the same time let Zach Orr do his thing give, give Zach Orr uh some grace because this is all new and I know you all probably tired of hearing us talk about patience with Zach Orr but you got to do it because he did it with Mike McDonald and look how that turned out reason I say that shout out to Cole Jackson because he brought out these interesting very detailed stats when it came to Mike McDonald in his first five games versus Zach Orr in his first five games and it is the following uh through the first five games as defensive coordinator Mike McDonald he allowed 1,451 passing yards uh, 540 rushing yards so a total of 1,991 total yards so about 2,000 yards uh, for 2024 Zach or his first five games he allowed 1,400 pass yards so 50 less passing yards uh, he allowed 302 rushing yards so about 240 less rushing yards uh, and he allowed uh, 1,703 yards so um Mike McDonald allowed about 2,000 yards. Zach Orr allowed about 1,700 yards. So 300 less total yards than Mike McDonald in the first five games. But that's not even the kicker. I mean, that's part of it. But what makes it even better with Zach Orr is the quarterback, the context. Because, again, numbers don't even tell the whole story. But the context, the quarterbacks that Mike McDonald went up against his first five games, and he gave up all those yards, it was Joe Flacco. Shout out to Flacco, by the way. It was Tua. It was Mac. Uh, Josh Allen and also Joe Burrow. So some good, some bad, some, ugh, some ugly. But anyway, those are his first five quarterbacks. But the first five quarterbacks that Zach Orr went against: Patrick Mahomes, Gardner Minshew, who we respect like crazy because he not only beat us this year, he beat us last year too. Came to MNT Bank Stadium both times and beat us. But anyway, Patrick Mahomes, Gardner Minshew, Dak Prescott, Josh Allen, and Joe Burrow. So. The list this year, the quarterbacks who we went against, is better than the list that Mike McDonald went up against in his first five games. So, again, we saw how Mike McDonald turned out. Let's give him some grace. Let's give Zach Orr some grace and some more time because he deserves it, in, in my opinion. Uh, Java also said, um, seeing our offense clicking and putting, over, putting up over 30 points, I must say, getting Devontae Adams would be a luxury versus a need. I still say trade for DeAndre Hopkins. Hold up. Like, ain't that the same thing, though? Wouldn't if Devontae Adams is a luxury, not a need, wouldn't DeAndre Hopkins be a luxury, not a need? Uh, he also said, uh, but most importantly, upgrade our safety because we are almost dead last in pass defense. Are we, we not last? I, I figured we were. I, I ain't looked at the numbers, but I figured that we were. But if we not, yeah, we got to be super close to it. He said, even though our O-line is starting to jail, which I predicted they would, I'm, I still say look for more offensive line help. I also would like to thank Coach Zach Taylor for not letting Joe Burrow throw the ball in that game-winning overtime drive. Hey, yo, shout out to him. Shout out to him. For real. Um, and maybe it was just a con lack of confidence thing in his quarterback. Because maybe he saw him, he's like, oh, my goodness. He just threw that pick toward the end of the game that brought the Ravens back. And he said, you know what, Burrow? I, I ain't, I ain't going to let you do that, man. 
I, I ain't going to let you put us in harm's way again. He said, yeah, no thanks. He also said, what a game. Must be honest with you. I thought we were going to lose that game when I saw the Bengals kick it, but thankfully he missed it and we were able to capitalize and steal the win. Uh, once again, Lamar Jackson played like an MVP with his extending the playability and spreading the ball. Our secondary is a problem, in my opinion, at free safety. Marcus Williams and Eddie Jackson are not it for us. Eddie Jackson has been struggling a lot. I know a lot of people have been saying Marcus Williams been struggling. And I know with, with that Jamar Chase play, I saw somebody on Twitter, uh, Michael Crawford, he slowed it down. He slowed it down and he showed Jamar Chase just like the route and how like a lot of people would just get caught slipping with that. Because it looked like he was going to go one way, but then he went the other way. And then uh, Marcus Williams just got caught flat-footed and then he got turned around and Jamar Chase went right past. It was just, even though he should have been playing deep, especially with given the, uh, that was right before, um, right before halftime. I, no, excuse me, right before the end of the game. Right before halftime or the end of the game, one of them two. But it was in a clutch situation and Marcus Williams just got caught slipping. Um, but anyway, um, he also said, uh, shout out to Marlo for that interception and shout out uh, for the play of the game, in my opinion, which will be that fumble snap with Lamar recovering it to give a mean stiff arm to Henderson and throw the touchdown to Isaiah Likely. Yeah, when that play happened, I thought Isaiah Likely had actually dropped it. The way that they were showing it on the broadcast view, the angle that they were showing it at, I thought that he dropped it, but I was glad to be wrong. He said, time to get ready for Jaden Daniels on Sunday because he is just as mobile as Lamar Jackson. Time to make my blood, time to take my blood pressure medicine from watching that game. And just like the Ravens are after that win, I'm out. Next question came from my guy, Zaga. Uh, he actually had to correct me on the pronunciation of his name. So since I publicly said it wrong, I will publicly apologize too. So my apologies, my friend. He said, also, I feel like Devontae Adams will help us a lot because it will open up the run game more because they will be worried about Devontae Adams with him being an elite receiver. Yes. Lamar Jackson has not ever had an elite wide receiver in their prime. And even though Devontae Adams may not be in his prime, he still is an elite wide receiver. Uh, Lamar Jackson has had some previous elite wide receivers that were way out of their prime, way out of their prime. Obviously, Odell Beckham Jr., Dez Bryant, Deshaun Jackson. With Sammy Watkins, he was never an elite wide receiver. He, he was good, though. He was never elite, but it was just the injuries, really. That was the only thing with Sammy Watkins. But, um, yeah, but with Lamar Jackson, he just, they, well, y'all know the story already. So, Get him an elite wide receiver, Ravens. Might as well. Uh, anyway, he said he's not worried about getting 1,000 yards, so he knows we can really win games with him. Not saying he will not be used in clutch moments. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's a, he's a clutch receiver. He's somebody that makes stuff happen throughout the game. And like you mentioned, he's somebody that would really open up this offense even more than it's already been opened up. Is this a conversation or am I tripping? Next question came from my guy, Drum Drum. He said, hey, Graven, how you doing today? Hopefully, it's been wonderful. Hey, so far, so good. I appreciate you. He said, I got a question for you about a certain player on the defense. That is Namdi Matabike. I haven't seen every game minute by minute, but I have been wondering why I haven't heard anything about Matabike. I want to check his stats, and they are they look all right until I remember we paid him $98 million, and that's all we are getting right now from him. He has a 10 combined tackles and one and a half sacks, according to ESPN. I was just expecting more from him, and right now with the secondary struggling, they need him to start getting after those QBs and make their lives easier. Thanks for reading, Raven. And just like Robert Sala with the Jets is... I'm out. Ooh, y'all be getting these people with them. I'm out, man. Y'all, y'all, y'all be hurting feelings, man. But anyway, with Matt Abike, um, numbers don't tell the whole story. They don't because, like, even he's supposed to have at least two and a half sacks because one of his sacks got taken away on what they call face mask, where he sacked Gardner Minshew, I believe. He grabbed him right here. Uh, they thought he grabbed the face mask. I remember live, it looked like a face mask, but then they showed the replay. It was, oh, it's not a face mask. But the refs, they stayed with the face mask call. So that took away one of his sacks. But um, I, I do agree. You want to get more out of him. But at the same time, like, he got paid for a reason. What he got, like 12, 13? I forgot how many sacks he got last year, but he got a bunch. But with him getting all those sacks last year uh, and with him getting paid this year, the opportunity, his opportunity was going to increase even more. His playtime was going to increase even more. With more money, more playtime, you're going to get more respect. You're going to get more double team. You, your name has recognition now. People know who you are. You're not sneaking up on anybody anymore. So while, yeah, we still, still do want to see more out of him, it's tougher now because he's like really a, a starter starter, not just opportunistic based off of when he gets his chances, but he's out there like full time on that defensive line. So this was a, a healthy expectation. We expected that his numbers would go down uh, because, again, people, were, they were going to know who he was now. Um, so we'll see how it goes throughout the season. He has not been bad. The defensive line has not been bad. I mean, 
wasn't wasn't good enough. I mean, Joe Burrow threw for five touchdowns on us, and uh, yeah, but. Anyway, he has not been bad. In the pass rush this season or as a whole, they've actually been pretty good. They've been getting in a lot of different ways. So they just got to clean up some things here and there, and they should be A-OK. Big thanks. Next question, or well, maybe a comment, came from my guy, Dylan. He said, uh, team keep it clean. No question today, just showing gratitude. Much love from a longtime subscriber and first-time writer. I want to take the time to say thank you for all you do and to the Ravens organization for the wonderful opportunity they provided. Oh, we don't do nothing, but I appreciate you. And shout out to the Ravens because the Ravens are they, they're pretty amazing, uh, especially like the off the field stuff that they be doing. But anyway, he said uh, on Saturday they hosted a baby shower for military families in the locker room. Oh, that's crazy. In a lot. Wow. Ravens like they Ravens be coming through, man. They, they really do. They have a baby shower in a locker room. Like, they really be coming through for people. But continuing, he said, uh, we had a great time welcoming uh, a horde of new military babies and future Ravens fans while being blessed with an opportunity to see a level of this of the team that we hadn't seen before. This truly is the best organization in the NFL. Uh, shout out to Operation Homefront and the Ravens flock. Yeah, shout out to the Ravens, man, for, for, for coming through, man. Having a, a whole baby shower in the locker room. Oh, man, that, that's, that's cool, man. So a bunch of babies running around in there. Oh, I know. It was in babies' lunchtime. And couple, well, babies, they, they, their food runs through them extra fast. Like, they got that metabolism going crazy. So, at that locker room, like, it, I know it's, it stinks in there after game day. So, just imagine a bunch of babies in there pooping and stuff and maybe throwing up and whatnot. But I'm, I'm, I'm sure y'all had a good time. And shout out to the Ravens for hosting something like that. Shout out to the kids, man. Next question came from my guy, Vaughn. Oh, my guy, Vaughn. He hit me up on Twitter, and I had responded to him, and then he hit me back, and then I just I got so busy. Y'all know stuff gets crazy with Ravens, and stuff just gets crazy in regular life, too. But he hit me back. He said, man, no, no, you ain't going to hit me back, no text back, or nothing. Like, what was up with that? And I, I, then I saw it. I said, man, hold up now. It's, things just got a little busy and whatnot. So my, my apologies, Vaughn. I appreciate you sending your question. And let's get to your question. He said, is the smartest thing John Harbaugh did in his coaching career uh, start Lamar Jackson over Joe Flacco? Uh, off the field, Lord knows what all the stuff that he did on the field. I, I want good defensive coordinator as a head coach uh, that knows how to work an offense. Mike McDonald is not going well with the Seahawks. S soon, Lord knows what he could do with this team. Uh, we play Lamar. Uh, Lamar is going to carry every single coach we have. I hate to say sorry for the long question. I just want a Super Bowl, and this is getting out of hand um yeah well i mean that was a, a a very bold move by john harbaugh but he hey, he had to do what he had to do to stay in his place and to keep his job so he was like look flacco it's been fun it's been real thanks for everything but yeah we going with the kid right now and lj and that's gonna be that um so yeah it obviously worked out now we're just hoping that it works out even more and the ravens finish what they've started so many different times um, but as far as Mike McDonald, yeah, it's not going well right now. But I mean, he they got the same record as us. I believe they they three and two. We three and two. So is it going that much better over here? Well, we got the same record. So let's see what Mike McDonald does. Um, that's they. That, he's gonna get time over there. He's gonna get some time. I I don't think he's going anywhere unless he just absolutely bombed it. But he he got some time over there. So Mike McDonald should be straight. Um, they lost. It, it was close with the score Because I know the Giants They got that blocked field goal at the end And then they ran it back So that extended the score But the game was pretty close And there's just some fine-tuned things here, here and there But Seahawks, they're they going to be alright Under Mike McDonald So I don't think he's coming back But you say you want a defensive coordinator uh, As a head coach um, Well, you always got plenty of options But those options are Nine times out of ten Going to stay in, in your head Because we all know John Harbaugh ain't going nowhere. Next question came from my guy, Zach. He said, Jarvis Landry? Mm, let's see what he said. He said, how would you feel about the Ravens signing Jarvis Landry? Nah. No, mm -mm. no I, I would definitely pass on that one. Shout out to Jarvis Landry, though. But, uh, no. I, mm -mm. Especially, yeah, he ain't been in the... What, when the last time he played, like, two years ago? I just... I, I would be scared about that, man. Like, he ain't played in, in years. Not to say that he couldn't come in and play, but let's get somebody that's... That's, that's here already Like that's in the league already That's active already But anyway continuing He said um, I heard he was supposed to have a comeback this year And he's still a free agent Yeah I heard about that too I don't know what happened He said I always thought he was a super solid wide receiver Yeah see we, In my opinion we don't need We don't need solid at wide receiver We need great We need great just to be ready uh, Come playoff time I mean we gotta get to the playoffs first But we need great Not super solid He said I know health would Maybe be an issue, but curious on what you think. That's that, too. That's a big part of it, too. 
um, when if somebody's not training, and I don't know if he's training or not, so I can't say, but their health may not be up to par. They may not be in football shape. They may, may be healthy, but not be in football shape. If you're not in football shape and then you go try to play football, ooh, that could be ugly fast. Uh, he says, side note, been watching for almost five years now. Uh, during every commercial of the games, I pull your stream up. Uh, big fan of the channel. I appreciate that, Zach. Thank you, man. I know he he said during a commercial break. So he said, look, I, team keep it clean. I love y'all. I ain't watching games with y'all, though. Y'all too loud. Y'all too crazy. Y'all be going wild in there, especially that, ooh, that Bengals game. That Bengals game was wild, man. Ravens just, whew, y'all already know what time it is. But, no, for real, on a serious note, though, I, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you supporting. I appreciate you watching the channel. But one thing I don't appreciate is you suggesting Jarvis Landry to the Ravens. Healthy scratch. Next question came from my guy D3. He said, hey, engraving the team, keep it clean. Got a quick question for you. Why do you think Devontae Walker has been a healthy scratch every game this year? I was just telling my guy Sway about this today. I had, and this is not a shot at him at all, but I had honestly forgot that we had Devontae Walker. I really did, and I think that's so sad. Fourth round pick, wide receiver. They just have not found a place for him. And if you, like early on, even be a fourth round pick, and Ravens ain't find a place for you yet, like your rookie, like it, that's, if you don't get playing time early, with, as a Raven and wide receiver, you don't normally get it late either. So, We'll see. It's only week five, but well, going in week six. But um, yeah, that is, ain't looking good to me. Uh, he said again, we are faced with the notion that EDC refuses to give up or trade draft picks, uh, for the betterment of the team. A pick was also wasted on a QB Leary just for him to get cut. Oh my goodness, I forget about that. I forget about that. You know what's crazy? Right? So many Ravens fans are saying, "Oh, why did they draft the quarterback?" And I and I told, I said, I feel like it was just a throwaway pick for them. They were like, "All right, whatever. Oh, we don't know who to pick. Nah, we'll pick a quarterback." Because T. Martin, that was his guy. Um, so, yeah, that, yeah, he's on a practice squad. Though. Well, yeah, he's on a practice squad. But, yeah, he ain't make the active roster. Anyway, uh, he said, as usual, we are left wondering. Anywho, have a great weekend. And we look forward to hearing from you after the bludgeon uh, of the Bengals. Take care and be safe. Oh, he said that before the game. So, it wasn't a, a bludgeon of the Bengals. But as long as we got to win, I don't care how it happens. This is why you got to wait till the game is over. Not to discredit anybody's thoughts, but let's hear from my guy, uh, Desmond. He said, what are we doing? What's up, Engraven? This is Desmond, a uh, long, long, long time subscriber. Hey, appreciate you, Des. He said, hope all is well with you and the fam. Oh, yeah, I remember because you're the only person that sent emails in this format. So I remember you. I know you ain't sent an email in a, in a, in a while. It might have been like a couple years, but... I appreciate you coming through. He said, also, I want to shout out the entire team. Keep it clean. It's halftime, and I'm thinking really hard about why we continue to do this to ourselves. This had to be the worst two-minute offense I've ever seen. Second and ten, and we call it draw. Okay, so that let me know that Hood Hobbs has turned into a conservative Hobbs, as he always does. Side note, Monkin called it, but Hobbs let him shake my head. But for the life of me, I can't understand why we called that timeout. Oh, that was that timeout that allowed the Bengals to get back in it. That allowed them to get right back in it and go down the field. That gave them even more time. So Ravens helped the Bengals out with that one. Thank goodness it didn't hurt them in the long run. But, yeah. And he said, um, please, someone help me with this. I'm not uh, deflating. I promise you I'm not. But I just don't understand our main problem is coaching. I've never been a type to call for anybody's job. But I think it's about time he calls timeouts. At the, he, I think it's about time. Yeah, Harbaugh calls timeouts at the wrong time. He challenges things he shouldn't and disregards the ones that he should. I watch every video you post and I see everyone calling for Bill Belichick. But... I think we will run into the same problem. Unfortunately, we let our future head coach go to Seattle. <laughs> oh, but we need some of that caliber. Someone young, energetic, and has a firm grasp uh, on the obvious. Okay, I'm done ranting about it. I'm about to tune back in. But like the aggressive play calls with a one-point lead, I'm out. Oof. So who, who would be – that's one thing you left out. Who would you suggest for head coach? Again, we, we know this is just all hypothetical because Harbaugh ain't going nowhere. But who would you suggest to be the Baltimore Ravens head coach, Deus? 